Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm super excited because we finally get to take a look at the all new Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K Max. That's exactly what they're calling it, and this is coming in at a $55 price tag. But remember, these go on sale all the time, at least the older Fire Stick 4Ks, so I'm sure we'll see a sale on these soon. They're claiming that this will offer 40% better performance than the last generation of the 4K stick, and hopefully we do get better performance, because when it comes down to it, I personally really like these devices for video streaming and light emulation. In this video, we're going to be testing out a bunch of stuff, but first things first, let's go ahead and get this out of the box. So it looks like we get the new Amazon Alexa voice remote. And going into this, I was really hoping that the Max used a new USB Type-C connector, but unfortunately, they're still rocking that micro USB. So if you have any old adapters that you used with your older Fire Stick, they will work with this. So from the unit itself, there's not much that's changed. We get the remote, we get our power adapter, USB cable, we also get a HDMI extension cable, batteries for the remote, and the Fire TV stick itself. These are very simple. On one side, we have HDMI. This is a full-size HDMI port. And over here on this side, we have our USB connector. And again, I just have to mention it, I really wish they would have used USB Type-C. It would have made life so much easier adding storage to this unit, but we still can using this micro USB connector. When it comes to the specs of the Fire Stick 4K Max, they have upgraded that CPU to a MediaTek MT8696. It's still a quad-core CPU running at 1.8 GHz, but they claim that this will offer up to 40% better performance than the last version of the 4K stick. And as for the GPU, this has also been upgraded to a GE9215 running at 750 MHz. We have 2 GB of LPDDR4 RAM instead of 1.5 in the last version. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, only 8 gigabytes of internal storage, but we can still use OTG over that USB port. And it's running Fire OS 7, which is based on Android 9. Before we jump into testing this thing out, I just wanted to give you a quick look at the OTG adapter that I use. I'm using some extra storage from a micro SD card reader. And basically what this does is we have USB on one end, we have power into the Amazon Fire Stick, and then power into everything over on the left hand side here. This will allow us to access that storage device that we have plugged into the USB port. And I just happen to be using a micro SD card because it was already set up. I'll leave a link for this in the description. You can pick up two of them for around $5 on Amazon. All right, so here we are. Personally, I'm a big fan of the new Amazon Fire interface. And if you take a look here, I've sideloaded some stuff, but the images aren't showing up. This is just stuff that I couldn't get on the Amazon App Store and I sideloaded from that USB drive. But if you download basically anything from the App Store built into the Amazon Fire Stick, you'll get icons. And speaking of apps that we can download, we have kind of a new app section here, and they finally added a search bar. So we can search for the app we want to download. Or if we search in here for a TV show or a movie, it should show up in the list for us. But there is a dedicated app store. Games, utilities, tools, and first and foremost, because this is really a video streaming device, and that's what it was created to do, tons and tons of video streaming services. And as for the wide vine level of the 4K Max, it's level 1. So yes, we can get HD with basically anything that requires wide vine or video DRM. That way we can stream 4K content from HBO Max, Hulu, Netflix, YouTube, you name it. You can get HD and 4K content here, no problem at all. First thing I wanted to take a look at was IDA64. I just sideloaded this. It gives us some information about the hardware. We do have that MT8696 CPU and 2 gigabytes of RAM. Quad core A55 at 1.8 gigahertz, and for the GPU, it's that PowerVR GE9215, and this does support Vulkan or OpenGL ES 2.0. The display I'm using right now maxes out at 1080p, so what I'm going to do is just swap over to a 4K monitor, that way we can get a little bit of 4K video playback out of the way and see how it performs with at least YouTube. Alright, so here we are with YouTube. This is a 4K display, that way we can go straight up to 4K with this. Stats for Nerds is on, and if you take a look right there in Stats for Nerds, we do have a couple drop frames, but this is doing really well. And I expected it to do 4K video streaming really, really well. That's what it's marketed to do. And even with the original 4K stick, I never had any issues with 4K or 1080p playback. And out of around 2000 frames, 2100, We've only dropped five so far, and this really comes down to the load in. So let's skip ahead a bit and see if we drop any more.
give it a second to catch up, and out of around 3100 frames, we've only dropped 5 so far. So, I mean, if you want to do 720, 1080, or 4K playback on this device, you're not going to have any issues, be it Netflix, HBO Go, Hulu, and as you can see here, YouTube streaming 4K 60fps. And by the way, if you have a Bluetooth controller like an Xbox One controller, it'll connect right up over Bluetooth and you can play your favorite games as long as they're listed on the App Store or you can sideload them. Now on the original 4K stick, I always had issues with these 3D racing games. I mean, it was really laggy, pretty much unplayable. And just starting this first race here, I can tell you that this is much better than the original 4K stick. I mean, I'm actually able to play this game. It's definitely not the best that I've seen, but it's working much better than the original 4K stick. Now really all we need are some good games on the Amazon app store. I also ran some benchmarks, at least what I could run. First up, Geekbench 4, unfortunately Geekbench 5 just wouldn't run. Single core on the new Max 911, Multi 2531, and we're definitely beating out the 2018 4K stick in single and multi. Next on the list we have GFX Bench, I just ran the T-Rex GPU benchmark. On the new Max, 1205. On the older 4K version, 814, so we are seeing better GPU performance. And the final benchmark I could get to run on both of these devices was Antutu. On the older version, 64,321. And on the new Max version, 73,789. And in each one of the scores, CPU, RAM, IO, and GPU, the 4K Max came ahead. I mean, obviously, we got a much better score here. These Fire Sticks are designed for video playback, and they do that really well. 720, 1080, 4K, you want to do streaming from YouTube, even Plex, it's going to work out just fine. Games that are on the App Store should work pretty decently, as we saw with Asphalt 8. But what about emulation? That's one thing that I always like to use these devices for. So let's go ahead and move over there right now. And the first thing we're going to test here is very light. This is Game Boy Advance. I'm using RetroArch. You can actually pick this up from the Amazon App Store. And this lower end stuff should run just fine. NES, SNES, PC Engine, Neo Geo, FBA, CPS 1, 2, and 3 should run at full speed. And even Game Boy Advance, as you can see here. And we could do this with the original 4K stick. So let's see how N64 performs. I'm using the parallel core inside of RetroArch for this game here. It's Diddy Kong Racing. And to my surprise, this is running at 30 FPS. It's actually performing really well. It's performing much better than I thought it would. But when it comes to N64 emulation on these ARM devices, this isn't a super hard game to emulate. One that comes to mind is 007 Goldeneye, so let's see how that performs. I'm still using the Parallel Core, and going into this, I tried Moopin64 from RetroArch. I also tried a standalone app, but I just couldn't get it to load. It was something that I had to sideload from my phone. Unfortunately, with RetroArch and the Parallel Core, as you can see, 007 Gold Knight isn't performing the greatest. Next on the list, we have some PlayStation 1 emulation. Still using RetroArch here with the PC SX Rearm Core. I didn't swap this out to a standalone emulator because it performs really well. Here's Tekken 3. I also tested Bloody Roar 2, which is one of the harder ones to run, and we can hit 60 with that. I mean, we're getting great performance with PS1, and I kind of expected it to run this well. So let's take it up a notch to Dreamcast. Here's Marvel vs. Capcom 2. We're using the Flycast Core in RetroArch. And by the way, I did test the ReDream emulator. It does boot up. We can install it here, but there's lots of graphical glitches going on. I guess because of the new PowerVR GPU. So hopefully the developer of ReDream gets that fixed up, and I'll come back and test this. I got a good feeling we can get much better performance out of Dreamcast on this with the ReDream emulator. And the final one I wanted to test, at least for this video, was PSP. So here we have the standalone version of PPSSPP, 2x resolution, Monster Hunter, running at full speed. This originally ran at 30 FPS, and that's what we have here. I'm getting great performance with this one, and I could probably take it up to 3x, but I just left it at 2 because it still looks great. By the way, this is one I had to sideload. I just went over to the PPSSPP website, downloaded the latest Android version, and transferred it on over. If you're into emulation on Android, you know that this isn't the hardest one to run, just like we saw with Diddy Kong and N64. So let's try something that gives these lower end chips a run for its money. And that's Chains of Olympus. 1x resolution, no frame skip, all the hacks that I can turn on without crashing this game out, and we're not even close to half speed with it. So let's try a little bit of frame skip. I'll just go into the menu here. 
and we'll set this to 1. Now what this should do is take us down from the original 60 FPS to half speed, which would be 30. And as you can see, even with frame skip enabled, it's really struggling. So let's take that frame skip to 2, which will take this game down to 15 FPS. And to tell you the truth, I would rather not play this game at 15, but with uh, all the hacks on, 1x resolution, frame skip set to 2, you can run it at 15. It's not the greatest experience, but it is working. So overall, my first impressions of the new 4K Max, it's actually a good little streaming device. Now, this is something for lighter emulation, obviously. It is performing better than the 2018 version in emulation, believe it or not. But we're just not working with a super powerful device for $55. Now, if you've already got the original 4K stick hooked up to your TV and you use it for your favorite streaming apps and, you know, it hasn't been freezing up on you, then I would stay away from this one. If you've been thinking about getting one of the Amazon streaming devices, be it one of their sticks or even a full-blown TV, TV, I would definitely opt for the max version over anything else. That extra RAM will help out with apps running in the background. Overall, it's not bad at all for $55, and I'm going to be spending the weekend with this. I will have one more video coming up. I do want to test a lot more emulation on this device, but I just kind of need to get everything set up. This was just my first initial review video, and I'm pretty happy with the performance I've seen so far, but I do have a lot more that I want to test, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave a link in the description. And if there's anything else at all you want to see running on the new Fire Stick 4K Max, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.